Come on. Where did you find this item at? Mm-hmm. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Um, what do you know about this item? Yes, that is correct. This is a kerosene lamp. Um, do you mind if I tell you a little bit more information about this one? Okay, great. Uh, well, uh, in the middle of the 19th century, uh, the first drops of kerosene were extracted from coal which put an end to whale oil. It's predominant. Um, many glass manufacturers and foundries began producing beautiful kerosene lamps uh, for homes and businesses. Um, the fonts were much larger and much more affordable than whale oil lamps. Um, thousands were produced but is anyone's guess to how many actual originals have survived? And that's due to the fact that this piece right here, which is called the globe, um, often were broken. Um, and the remaining remnants were often discarded. Uh, instead of buying a new globe, they just discarded the remnants and just bought a new lamp. Um, but to a modern collector, um, in position of the surviving uh, specimen, this is very good news. Uh, during their production, kerosene lamps were designed for bedrooms, uh, parlors, halls and libraries. Many different shapes and styles were made. Uh, library lamps and hall lamps. Uh, they had a pull-down mechanism uh, referred to as a motor. Uh, it had nothing to do with a motor. Uh, but this allowed the user to adjust the height of the lamp itself. several well-known companies uh, such as Bradley and Hubbard, uh, Fostoria, Consolidated, and Miller and Handel uh, produced beautiful kerosene banquet lamps. Um, some brass, bronze, and spelter bases were designed by these glass companies and others were farmed out. Companies such as Consolidated and Fostoria produced some of the most beautiful shades um, with uh, lion heads and angels um, blown into the glass in three dimension so it stuck out. Um, and they're very difficult to find in their completely original state um, and highly sought after by collectors. Um, this on the other hand is not the case, um, but it's still a wonderful piece, very beautiful piece. Um, if we look at the shade, you can see it has a rose design. There's one two, three roses. It also has these stems, the leaves, and with the leaves, it's even so detailed that it even has the veins of the leaves. Um, 
beyond the roses, we find wheat, which is also very well detailed. You can see the grains of the wheat. So, all in all, it's a very beautiful piece, very beautiful shape. Um, if we look at the the item itself, you'll notice that there are three parts to it. There is the shade, the globe, and the mechanism. Now I see you uh, brought along a different style of shade. Um, did this shade come with this item? great. That's very rare to, um, to find the complete to semi-complete set. Um, but um, in a moment I will show you how this shade uh, goes on if you like. Okay, great. That's, that's great. Okay, well, uh, do you mind if I some of this apart to show you more. Okay. Well, to take the shade off, it's fairly simple. You just pull these gently back. Now, as you see, it has this piece here. Before we stick this shade on, we'd have to take this off. And here's how you do that. You pull these back a little bit. And it slips right off. Now, this here, little wheel, is what brings the wick in and out of the globe. And the higher you bring it out, the larger the flame will be. Um, now, to fill the globe with kerosene, all you do is unscrew the mechanism from the globe, fill it with kerosene, And screw the mechanism back on. Now, we are ready to put the new shade on. This shade, this shade is mainly used for such locations as halls and bedrooms. Um, but it wasn't used much for living rooms or anything. That's where the more fancier shade comes in. any idea of what the value of this item would be? No? Okay. Well, in today's market, I would value this around maybe 
around 150 US dollars to maybe 300 US dollars. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, that's very great. Especially in this condition. Thank you for coming in and uh, sharing this item.